So this is a, a great matchup of the guards, but you also got some big time post players as well. I think we're in for a good one today, Roy. Yeah, first meeting in the regular season, almost two decades. That's hard to believe. Opening tap, controlled by the Gators, dressed in the dark unis, Miami and the home whites. We are underway as we take a look at the starting five for Florida. Rimdahl, Deans, Ricards, Duke, and Kyle. Florida's only lost this season against Florida State. Ironically, the team that Miami will face coming up for its next opponent Wednesday in Tallahassee. Shot clock under 10 on the first possession of the afternoon. Kyle bottled up. And a deep three is well short. And here comes the U. Starting five for Miami as Cavender sends it outside to Destiny Harden, and she comes up short. Rebound tracked down by the Canes and a fresh 20. Miami led in scoring by Destiny Harden. Jaleah Williams also less than a point behind her. And the 15-footer, no good. The rebound controlled by Rashea Kyle. So both teams starting off this game patient on offense you know, working to get a nice shot not in a rush like to see that good pull up jump shot there for Florida that will go in nicely. Well, the mid range available Gators strike first. And going into a 2 3 zone. And trying to do what you can to slow down Miami a zone will help some. Now, Jaleah Williams got it back to the other end of the court. And Miami turns it over. Florida forces 21 turnovers a game. Their defense is suffocating. And the Gators have it. Two-point advantage. And tapped out, it will stay on this end. Plenty of time on the shot clock. So Dean's had the first bucket, two minutes in. The U still in search of its first points. Do like those jerseys for Miami today, and I can't get, wait to get your commentary wow, on. Wow, uh, I can't believe you just said that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was about to make a comment on the jerseys. I missed the green trim. Quick trigger by Dean's, and it's 5 nothing Gators. Florida. I also like those uniforms as well. I know it makes it hard to read some of the names, though. You feel a way about black uniforms, I think. Well, it's not only the names, it's the numbers on the backs of the jersey. Oh. And inside a turnover. Good defense by the Gators and Kyle working hard against Pindande. There's that one hand pass by KK Dean. Well, you know this. Most coaches would go crazy over that, but she hits it. Stolen by Tom Destiny point. Hart. Here come the Canes, mid-range there. Miami on the board, it's Jalea Williams. And the steal on the inbounds. Because Miami is also so solid on defense with active hands, you're gonna see a lot of this. Nice free play, ball movement, spacing. And Cavender knows how to set you up as well. We, we talked about KKDs, but Cavender has that ability as well. I, I like how she manages the game and the energy of the game. So Harden for two, the lead down to one, and a burst of energy now for Miami. Ooh. Good bounce pass to Dutes. Great job by Kyle not to get disrupted by the double team. She took an extra just moment. See what the defense gave her. I knew somebody had to be open, but great job to move without the ball and step into that pocket. Kane's last in action last weekend, a Sunday dub against North Florida after a loss to Michigan in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Last year of that challenge, by the way. Straightaway three, no good. That was Harden. And Brooke, next year we get the ACC SEC Challenge, both the men's side and the women, which I can't wait for that. And look, maybe we'll see more of these matchups. I like it. Yeah, this is a preview of what we could be getting. This is good merit for the pull up there. And I, the point I wanted to make before was North Florida put up a great game. That's a nice move. Ooh. Ooh. Williams has had two or three of those in this game. Nine to six. 
Four and a half minutes in. Off the high ball screen. There's another three for the Gators. Make it 12 to 6. And so Dean's starting to get loose from downtown. I think KK Deans wanted a piece of this game. Three for three, two of two from behind the line. We know we talked with Kelly Ray Finley this year. One of the questions I asked her, hey, who's the team clown? Who keeps everybody loose? And she said it was KK. Miami responds with another <laughs> deep three of its own, and that was Cavender from distance. So I think KK Deans does a lot of things. The intangibles, the scoring, you talked about the one-handed passes we've seen dropping dimes, but also there's something to be said about team chemistry as well. Oh, you, you have somebody that can keep the locker room loose, that's incredibly valuable. You know who pops up in my mind for that? Sydney Colson, the Aces, Texas A&M. I mean, she's the funniest player in the WNBA, hands down. Area Vets was bumped on the rebound. That'll go against Ricards, her first. Nobody says that about you, though, actually, when they think about announcers and who's funny. Your, your name doesn't come up much, just so you know. <laughs> no, it does not. I would agree with that. Gators off and running and a good start on the road with KK Deans. A couple of threes to give UF the lead. Still early. Out of the WNIT. When you know it, Brooke Weisbro, Shanice Johnson was playing for the U now an assistant coach. Give her the double-double 12 years ago. She was filling <laughs> it up back then. Shanice was really, really fun to watch play and extend her career into the WNBA. And I know she has uh, had to recover back from a knee injury, so it's so good to just see her involved still in the game. And she was always so, that, that fun locker room vocal player. You see her talking already on the sideline. A little bit of swag. And I say that... Uh, sarcastically she brings all the swag to the sideline and that's not easy to do at Miami destiny Harden off the mark the rebound by Duke for Florida it's just hard for me to believe that these two haven't played each other you know, hardly know. at all in the last 20 years it just seems odd it needs to happen I mean we we need to kind of create some must-haves in women's basketball and this is one of those games that is well said I would agree shot clock under 10 for Florida KK Deans Mm. And a traveling Walk. violation. How about the veteran officiating crew we have here today? Dee Cantner, Eric Bruton, Talisa Green, three of the best in the business. Come on. We got the final four crew in the house today. Big time. Shay Dwyer checking in out of that first time out. 13 in white coming off the career high. 20 points in eight steals versus North Florida. Ooh. And an open look for Haley Cavender. That's a three and we're tied. She was demanding the ball in the corner. And I love that. I, I cannot tell you how many times you, it's crazy for players who want to complain about not getting the ball. I'm like, did you ask for it? Did you make yourself known and vocal? Give me the ball, clap. And she did all that. And then she paid it off with a nice three. Yeah, we can go back and watch her tapes from Coastal Carolina. There was a lot of begging and pleading, asking <laughs> no, for the basketball right. because we knew oh, you yeah. weren't going to pass it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deans that's to right. Duke. She's got to hurry. Duke banks it home from 15. Good shot by the 6'4 senior. Duke. Charge. Yes. KK Deans, no question about it. One of the toughest players you will see in this league. Very willing to give up her body. Dwyer picks up her first personal. Less than three to go in an entertaining first quarter. I think you and I both believe this game, as it continues, has the potential to get a little chippy, just knowing the personalities on the two sides and the fact it's a rivalry and the fact that they don't see each other all that often. Man, if we could only see what the group chats look like leading up to this one. <laughs> well, there are to some connections here, too, between these two sides with Jalea Williams, Talia Weish, and Tatiana Weish playing on the same AAU team. They said uh, the pleasantries will be exchanged after today <laughs> as opposed to before. Yes. And stepping out, Gators turn it over. Great position defense for Miami there. And you saw Coach Meyer over there on the sidelines just clapping, being as energetic as she can be, getting her ladies into it. And she loves teamwork, sharing the basketball, but she can really dig down on defense. Gators bringing in Leilani Correa, 
who check in, checks in for the first time. Leading scorer off the bench, all nine of her games this year coming off the bench, but the transfer from St. John's has been electric. So is Destiny Hart, and now Miami's out in front. And the Canes have their first lead. Full court pressure now extended by Miami. Correa has it. I like the running traps for Miami. Just to throw Florida off, keep them deep. KKD, a little heat check. This is what Spearman Miami wants rebound. you to do. They want you to get in a hurry. Cavender, count it! Don't let her get in the rhythm now. That's what she wants. That's what I mean by the way Cavender can manage the energy of a game. That's the speed that she loves to have it. I would love to show a few plays ago her clapping in the baseline, wanting the ball, hit the three. And look, she's already down there talking. You see how vocal she is. She's pointing, really leading the defense right now. To put a short player like that on the back of the zone, Roy, you have to be a good communicator. Yeah, oh. Miami in the 2-3. Gators missed the layup. Put back no, and a late whistle coming in. And a foul called against the Canes. Weich hit the deck pretty hard. So Miami now with a four-point lead on the strength of Haley Cavender's three-for-three three performance from distance. Okay, great. And then her sister has a totally different hairstyle. So we're good, bud. We're good. <laughs> that was called. Such good. Sorry, I'm just going to say how good ball handlers they were. Are. Coming up Saturday on ACC Network, also on the app, our college basketball doubleheader starts in one, North Florida and Pittsburgh, followed by Cornell and Syracuse. Both games of one and three, respectively. Orange have won 41 straight against the Big Red, dating back to uh, 1969. Harden off the mark with a three ball. Spearman the rebound. She lost the handle. A foul called against the Canes. And Spearman picks up her first. Checking back in, Pendande, senior out of Spain, started her career at Utah, member of the Spanish national team. Under a minute to go here in our first quarter. And the Gators turn it over, a little sloppy in the backcourt, and let's see. They'll change the call after the initial ruling. Katie Meyer, year number 18. Brooke, where's the time gone for this to be year number 18 at the U for Coach Meyer? That wild. We talked about that in the break. I, said, I, I remember being in Charlotte, and it felt like just 10 years ago. A little scary. That's, that's really scary, because all of a sudden it's going to be 30 years. And then you're going to be really old. That's correct. Ricard behind the back. Offensive foul when well, the screen was moving. And it's nothing flashy, right? Miami is, is pressuring the offense to play faster. Then they're playing great position defense. Yeah, that's Cavender not using her hands. It's using her feet and body to stay in front of the offense. That's great work. And Ricard's just used the forearm there. Three-second differential between the clocks. Cavender gets it back. Oh. And a step back on the way. Oh. Count it. It should make the reels. Stopped on a dime. Shot clock is off. 16 footer good. Yes, sir. Cavender with 11 in the first quarter. Ricards with the basket just before the buzzer, Brooke. This is how it's going to be today. It's going to be like that. I'm going to hit you with the crossover step back, and then you're going to answer with the buzzer beat on the other side. Oh, Cavender, great shot. Pull up looks good. Perfect from the floor, and especially from distance. She's been the difference so far, Brooke. Yeah, she really uh, has ignited this game, and you see how much her teammates feed off of her. I mean, just, you know, the, the talking, getting over there and just doing a fist bump, 
I mean, she really does a good job checking in. And, you know, you were just sharing with me how how much, you, you know, you felt a sense of respect that came from her and her sister when you were there calling the game. And that's a, a you know, it's a big part of it. You're a point guard. You have a big responsibility just in that. But the bigger picture, of course, that everybody knows the Cavender twins have such a large social media following and, uh, you know, still still being on the, very much on the outside of that world in terms of large number of following. You know, you think when you have that kind of uh, clout, it's easy to have a different type of attitude. But you mentioned these two young ladies are so humble. They work so hard and they've contributed so much to this program. You can really see it in the way she's playing today. Yeah, transferring in from Fresno State, you saw it there on the score bug, the former Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Hannah, of course, a part of this roster, a traveling violation and the correct call. 30 seconds in to our second quarter. Gators turn it over. But, I mean, the Cavender Twins, if Miami's going back to the tournament this year, they're going to play a central role in that. And mm -hmm. I think it's a role that has not yet fully developed. I think Katie Meyer wants to see more of a take-charge attitude from both players because they can score and they can fill it up inside the mid-range no the rebound by jasmine roberts no and a foul call will put number four in white on the strike well even moments like this right where everybody just immediately comes to huddle both teams doing that you see the leadership going on and as important as talent is that's a great pass inside to pendante your voice can outweigh your talent. And I think that's what I hear you saying, Roy, in what Coach Meyer is asking for is you, you have to be out there and, and start the engines, you know, and get this team warmed up, ready to go. Because those two have the energy and the ability to impact and affect the rest of the team by the way they play. Foul was called against Kyle. That's her first. Roberts two for two at the line, 71% this season. Miami with its largest lead at five. And now the Mets will come back here after trailing for most of the first quarter. Now the U trying to zone of their own. And we saw this at the end of the first quarter with some success. Three ball in and out, Rimdahl off the mark. Now Hannah Cavender pushing, left-handed, no. Ricards. Tapped out, it'll stay on this end. Now the Gators certainly an interesting story in their own right with Kelly Ray Finley taking over now on a full time basis her second season and last year of course well documented taking over and leading the Gators to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2016. I think they've operated at a high level in the transfer portal bringing in Correa KK Deans obviously they've got some talent the Gators backcourt this year and a turnover here. Pindande outside to Cavender off the pump fake and the three. <laughs> Can she not sell you? She's so quick and the, the control she has over the basketball, her footwork, everything is just so well put together. She can really make you think she's doing something. And just that little fake sets you off. Dude in traffic was tripped up and a foul called. Harden was trying to defend. Watch this again, good pass, traffic, right? Just a little, just a little hezzy, just to sell the defense a bit. And good interior pass. Yep, good spacing and, and court awareness too by Williams to get out of the way. No Brooke, reason for two players. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Roy. That was the second foul on Destiny Hard, and she's gonna have to take a breather three and wide on the oh, bench wow. as the uh, leading scorer. So keep, keep track of that, and we'll see if Florida can take advantage. Big deal too, and she was over there grabbing on her, her legs. We wonder what may have happened there. She looked pretty sore. Spearman penetrating, laying it up. Can't finish, and a foul call. Delisa Green with a call on the far side as Duke hit the deck pretty hard. She was grabbing her jaw, so let's see what kind of happened. Oof, on the way down, big time collision. Pendande, it looks like she may have 
collided with her coming in the backside for the rebound. Foul was called on KK Deans. That's her first. Miami keeps possession with an eight point lead, largest of the afternoon. Spearman inside connects. Her first points. Here comes the full court pressure. Hannah Cavender extending that defense. Dean's top of the key, in and out. Spearman controls. Oh, Miami, they are in such good shape. For them to play at this speed, offensively and defensively, I mean, it feels like 110 miles an hour. Haley Cavender has 16 points. She's almost single-handedly outscored Florida thus far. Mm -hmm. Rimdahl left open, that's a three, and it's all net, and a big shot for the Gators. And she's their three-point shooter. She's had a couple of games back-to-back -back with five threes. So if anybody can get it going for the Gators, she certainly can light it up. High ball screen and a foul, the tap on the shoulder. And that'll go against Warren, who just checked in. Dry Warren picks up her first. Anna Cavender, Haley Cavender. Haley, a story thus far with 16. She averages 10 per game up to this point in the season. But, you know, if you're a league player of the year like she was in the Mountain West Conference, you know you can fill it up. She's doing that so far today. You know, it's great to find players who can excel when you put them in a bigger spotlight. And I think you're, you're seeing her evolve right before our eyes against a big team like Florida. And coming out of the SEC, she's really, she's developing a big-time game here right now. You know this is going up. No, she'll get rid of it in the last second. Yeah, she should have put it up. She's got such a quick release, too. It, it would not have gotten blocked. Nadine stuck with her. She didn't bite on the ball fake, but she did get a little bit of spacing and just missed out. Instead, she gave her sister the turnover. <laughs> Sit here, you do something with it. <laughs> I think that's how you and I would play basketball uh -huh. and make oh, sure you were credited sure. with the turnover. <laughs> I'm Don't not worry, hoisting I up that three. I would have found a way to shoot it. I would still shot it. <laughs> Rimdahl off the screen. Attacking. Snuck that layup up. Couldn't finish it, but she'll get it back. The other thing, too, about Florida has to get back because Miami is, is all about that fast break, so you're not going to see a, I haven't seen a lot of Gator offensive rebounders here lately. Florida's 9-1. They've won seven in a row before today. And the contested mid-range is there. Leah White, her first bucket. Williams lost the handle. Spearman gets it back. She was blocked. No foul. The crossover and an offensive foul. The call. No basket. Great crossover, again, attacking, but the footwork there is long. You don't have to, your feet don't have to be still, but you do have to get defensive position set. That's great work, lateral movement by Florida to get out there. Canes with a seven point lead, almost halfway through the second quarter. Mentioned it earlier, the first meeting since 2010. And we asked Katie Meyer about that. They actually had an inter-squad scrimmage against Florida last year. And she called the rivalry a healthy rivalry. <laughs> in the sense that they want to see each other a little bit more. But there's respect. And two teams that feel like they have a great chance to make the dance this year. KK Deans, no. Mm -hmm. This is the second round it. NCAA game right here. I think that's valid. It's got that vibe to it, right? Mm-hmm. And Miami's playing like, you know, the club don't close till we say so <laughs> kind of energy. That's that's where oh, Miami's wow. coming from. Canes turn it over. And a timeout on the floor as we step aside. A good game brewing in beautiful Coral Gables, ACC, SEC. Miami with seven point advantage. Perfect start against rival Florida today. 16 points and just doing the work, you know, getting this team involved in terms of 
running the offense more efficiently. You saw the spacing happen, and it, it was right after she commanded the ball for a three, and everybody else just kind of got right behind her and said, all right, you go, you lead, and we will follow. She's just got such a commanding presence. Her not being the tallest player on the floor by any stretch of the imagination, but a perfect day today so far. 16 points and four of four from behind the line. Yeah, Cavender six of six from the field overall. Rest of the team just five for 17, combining for 13 points. Shot clock under 10, Gators have it. Deans to Weish, double team, triple team, and travel. Brooke, how long does it take a transfer, in your opinion, to adopt to the new setting. I mean, coming in from Fresno State, averaged about 20 points last year. Her sister comes with her. Gators force the steal, coast to coast, make it 29-24. And a great play by Correa for her first two points. But it takes a little bit of time to adopt, right? I think so, but every every team has different players every year. So everybody goes through that, and, and they go to a new program, no doubt. And I think it's... Are you going to go in there with an open mind and the willingness to work hard? And I think both of those answers are yes. And so you're seeing the results of that. Now, you don't know how you're going to gel well with the team. You don't know if you're going to have teammates that are going to be like, oh, I know who they are. They're social media stars. I don't want to play with them. You don't know that. And so it's kind of uh, a big onus on, on you to, to make sure that you're there and understand it's about basketball, leading, being a good teammate. And so they've made all those things very evident. So kudos to them and Coach Meyer and her staff for just getting everybody about the win. Deans with a full head of steam commits the offensive foul. And you know for Florida, you got KK Deans, one of their transfers. And so they're going to play right behind how hard she plays. But that's unfortunately a little too much shoulder as Dwyer gets there. And you see the push off with the elbow, not the shoulder. <laughs> Dwyer sold it. That's what she does. And that's one thing I love about her game. You give her a little bit of contact, and she's going to sell that charge. I think when we got assigned this game, we started thinking about it pretty quickly. Dwyer, Deans, OK, what does this look like, especially if they're going toe to toe against each other? Well, there's a lot of talent. There's a ton of athleticism. There's also a lot of personality between those two that should be fun to watch today. A little talking right now between Weish and Williams, I think, under the basket. But uh, yeah, that was one of the one of the key players we thought. And have an extra conversation here. We'll watch it again. A little bump off course. A little extra, little chat. A little mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, let's get it started. Hey, as long as we, you know. We're keeping it clean, we're not fighting. I do not mind a little extra chatter. That's what makes the women's game so great. There's so much petty along with the game itself. 7 nothing run for Florida to get right back in it. One more free throw coming for Jalea Williams. I haven't seen a ton of free throws between these two sides just yet. Just four combined free throw attempts. Oh, now make point. it five. Now Williams is down there smiling, giving an extra extra wink over to Weiss. Didn't hit the free throw. And a close one like that, got to make sure you lock in. And remember, they played that same AAU team along with ah, yes. Tatiana Weiss. So there's, there's going to be a little jaw in there. There's a three by Correa. And now a 10-0 burst by the Gators. A good answer by the Gators. Going to, I think, a man-to-man -man has really helped them out because you see the pressure in the double team. The, they're now trying to jump and double team Miami's guards up top, making it difficult for them to get in the lane and entry pass. So we had enough of Cavender. ACC PM with Mark Packer, Trey Boston, Taylor Tannenbaum. They'll talk football. Also have the latest from around the conference every single weekday, 4 Eastern, right here on ACC Network, also on the ESPN app. Off the inbounds, Haley Cavender dumps it off. Well. And a traveling call gives it back to the Gators. So it was 29-17 with seven minutes to play in the half. Almost five minutes later, Miami's still without any points. And the lead has shriveled to two. Yeah, there's a much different feel for Florida's defense. They are not allowing Miami to dictate the pace anymore. It really responded well. Now you're right. Miami, five turnovers in the last five minutes. 
I think if you're Florida, you feel good as well. Your leading scorer in Correa only with five points after being shut out essentially the entire first and first quarter and a half, if you will. Rimdahl, no, poked out back to the U. Pendande followed her all the way from the wing to under the basket. I'm surprised that ball even made it to the backboard. Anything you want to see different with Miami offensively here to close out the first half, Brooke? Well, they have to learn how to deal with this pressure here. So they're doing that. Spread out, pass it, and you can get the look you want. You just can't fall under pressure. That would have been a nice move by Dwyer. I, I think she did one up and under too many, Roy. She made the shot a little more difficult. But this is how you break the press. You got to go ball movement. Somebody go middle, right? You go middle wing. And a good ball fake, one dribble pull up. I don't think she expected to see. Perhaps Weish came in last second and altered her shot. Either way, Miami's to the line. Foul was called on Tatiana Weish. And Pendante, a 58% free throw shooter. One more coming. Done a great job on the floor. Shooting at 50% this season. That'll stop the 10 0 run by the Gators. One of two at this strike. Correa the rebound. Leilani scored the last five for UF. She's operating down low. Pendande is everywhere. Correa, no. Pendande the rebound. Cavender still oh. hasn't missed a shot. Dwyer left open. <laughs> Dean's the rebound. Well, that was a really nice move by Cavender to avoid getting the ball stolen and almost had a really nice assist to go with it. Sloppy play here. Gators maintain possession. Somehow it stays in bounds the until there. Let's go. We are getting exactly what we hoped for. Feel the pride right now in this game. These players are turned up. They know what it means. Williams checks out. And also back on the floor, Faith Duke for the Gators, the senior from Vancouver. And Ricard's also will check back in with less than a minute to go. What's been a entertaining first half nearly in the books. Rimdahl against area vets, full court. Gators in their man to man. Cavender outside, area vets launching. In and out. Back to Florida. So a two and a half second differential between game and shot clock. The last two possessions, Miami's had nice looks from three, both set up by Cavender's passing, but Miami's patience overall, the spacing and, and getting the ball inside, making the defense collapse. And you can see players, even during the plays, are pointing, talking where the ball should go. It's like you and during our breaks, these broadcasts, Definitely. directing traffic, telling me what to say, coming back, <laughs> making sure everything is in order. I'm used to it six and a half years into this little thing. <laughs> Good. You should be. <laughs> <laughs> Ricards between the legs. The crossover's there. Kyle the spin. Kane's got to hurry. Here comes Cavender. Williams. 30 to 27 as we reach halftime in Coral Gables. Now the wait, it's been worth it up to this point. First meet. So clearly the players really respond to her way of coaching, to the way that she communicates. And this program is on a roll. Nine and one, seven game win streak and right on the verge of being beating a very good Miami team on the road. This is a big time game for Florida. So what drama will still unfold here in our second half between these two rivals, Miami and Florida. Gators have possession, and on their first possession, they turn it over. 
Cavender in transition. Layup, no. Pindande tried to get it back, and then it pops out to Florida. Miami so far already with 19 points off turnovers, 12 of them for Florida in this game. Couple of moves by Kyle. Pindande clears. Cavender's been doing it on offense, but Pindande on defense, it, she's been a nightmare. Area vets for three and splashes that one home. 33 27. Transfer from Wyoming with her first points. And they come at a critical time to start the third quarter. You know what's difficult about Miami's backcourt between Cavender's quickness and the length of Jalea Williams? That would make it very difficult to, to start your offense. Trying to pass into the wing or the post. Pendande taking a seat. She might have gotten a charge call for it because she definitely got there. Trying to get past Miami's guards, their backcourt. That's, they make it difficult for you to do that. So Florida brings out their big, that's smart, and open up the defense, and then allow Duke to put the ball on the floor and try to create. First foul on Pendande. Dude at 71% at the stripe this year. She'll get one more. Had a team high 25 blocks last season, matching her jersey number. 11 rejections so far this campaign. It's interesting, Kelly Ray Finley said, when Duke doesn't talk, we're in trouble. So they're leaning on Faith Duke <laughs> to be a leader for the Gators this, this season to a certain extent. And you make a point because that's such a big responsibility. And Florida playing his own right now, you have to have somebody out there that is talking and you can hear them out there. As Miami gets a good look on the inside, Harden back in the game. Can't get it again. back off the turnover. And a foul call and a chippy. Stay with the Canes. KK Dean's a bit aggressive. So that's her second personal. Now the game changed when Cavender left in that first half. Step back, Jay. Her first miss. Florida came back that 10 0 run. And then Miami without a field goal for almost a solid eight and a half, nine minutes of game time as Deans was fouled. Miami's going to have to adjust the way that they guard Deans in transition because right now she's she's finding a way to create just enough contact. You know, even when Miami seems to be in good sound defensive position. Doesn't seem to be a foul there. But Dande just the last minute. You know, why not go with her and contest and use that length? But you see Deans, right? She, she moves into her just at the last minute, gets the contact. It's a smart play by Deans. 88% at the line this season. Missed the first. That was the second foul on Pindande. Missed them both, and the rebound cleared by Destiny Hart. Well, the one thing about Cavender, she will not force her shot. She's going to take it nope. when she's open. Yep. And you see her didn't like the offense the way it was set, so she just pulled the ball back, and you saw everybody just respond, right? The whole offense opened up. Everybody got outside the arc. They didn't hit that three, but they got a good shot out of it. And it started with Cavender settling everybody down. Dante chased down the rebound, was hit by Duke. That'll be her second. Canes at seven and three. Last loss coming against Michigan in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Area vets, no. Only loss for Florida this season against rival Florida State. Gators have won seven in a row. Weiss with position now bounces it outside. Rimdog controls. 
foul inside. That'll go against the Gators. And Harden was doing a great job defensively. Trying to set her position to prevent the entry pass. And it worked as the personals called on Kyle. And that's another way you can just make things difficult and be active. It's, you know, defense is so much about positioning, but it's even more about effort. So if you can do those things to frustrate the offense, it, it'll work in your favor. You draw a foul on somebody else, that's a great play for your defense. And that's also straight up, right? You've got length, so use it. Instead of trying to block the shot, just look to contest. Ricard's too strong. Area Vets the rebound. Canes with numbers. Area Vets turned it over. Ricard snuck in. Inside to Ricard's for a big bucket for Florida, and it's a one possession game. Well, Florida really coming through on defense right now. Holding Miami scoreless last three minutes. Oh, for their last five. Their zone becoming a problem for Miami. Well, it looks like they're Williams. showing zone Roy maybe going to man. Yeah, they've switched it up, it looks like. Inside Cavender, now with 18. She was the only one in that lane that went after the ball. And there was a lot more players, a lot of players who were a lot taller than her surrounding her, yet she wanted it the most. So she got it. She's tied her season high with 18. Harden the rebound. Right off the shins of Cavender, but she corrals it. Anyway, she's coming off a game where she had 10 points, four assists, five boards, two steals. Setting her teammate up right there and Harden for the three in rhythm. Look how excited she is. Big, big time play for Harden and the Canes. Now with an eight point lead, it's just an easy play. That's what Cavender does. She looks for the easy plays and makes them set you up. Harden catching rhythm. That's a nice three point shot. Hurricanes back in Coral Gables. Florida shooting just 40% from the field, Brooke, but now the turnovers starting to uh, go on the up and up. 14 miscues already today, approaching that season average here with a lot of time left to play. And Miami's capitalized on most of them with 19 points off turnovers, and, and they've missed a, a few easy buckets that could lead to more, but that's the difference in the game. I mean, eight points. You can easily look to those points off turnovers as one of the big reasons why Miami has the lead. You wonder as well from a Florida perspective, at what point does Leilani Correa start to get more involved in the offense? Had a quick 5-0 run in the second quarter, and that's been it. She'll get triple teamed here. Found Rimdahl, who was open, and inside the three-point line makes the mid-range. Well, as you can see, Miami has has taken the approach of if you're going to beat us, it's got to be someone else, right? So Rimdahl has had some open looks and gotten herself open because the attention is has been away. Correa is not getting the, the same type of looks she's able to get because she's getting triple teamed. Against the zone, Harden draws the foul. Free throws coming for the U. When we come back, a good game in Coral Gables. Six-point lead for the home team. 38-32, halfway through, entertaining third quarter. Katie Meyer, Kelly Ray Finley talking to their teams, and we mentioned it in the first half, but Coach Meyer calling this rivalry one that was healthy. These two programs do recruit against each other, even though they haven't faced off in 12 years, and this is the first time they've played each other in the regular season now since 2003. They did have the inter-squad scrimmage a year ago, which they uh, learned a little bit more about each other, but a healthy rivalry, not a bad thing, as Harden gets one more free throw. One of my favorite things to do in the offseason when I would go back to Ohio was go to Xavier and Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, which at the time was a Division II powerhouse, national championship powerhouse, and just play open gym. And, and to me, this... This feels just as much like a second round NCAA game as it does a summertime heated open gym competition where everybody feels loose, confident, ready to fire, and, and just talking a lot of trash. Correa tried to use the rim as protection. I was just getting ready to ask you the question, at what point do you think 23 in black, Leilani Correa gets more involved with the offense? At some point, I think that has to happen for Florida. Harden was bumped, and she'll shoot two more. So the vibe I'm getting from Correa is that she 
has not taken that step into the game. You know, I, I get that she's getting double and sometimes triple teamed. Uh, what I'm not feeling from, from her yet is that takeover mentality that I think you're re referencing and I'm looking for from her. When's that killer mentality, that light got to flip on because Miami clearly came into this game with you on the scouting report saying, we're not going to let her bother us tonight. And so far, it's been effective. Hard now in double figures with 11, make it 12. And a couple of big free throws. The lead extended back to double digits. And she can come off some high ball screens. She can move without the ball, come off some staggered. Uh, but but she's got to she's got to move. The more you just kind of stand still and, and try to dribble, I mean, here's a little bit off the screen. But now she should be moving without the ball. Shot clock down to eight. Correa left open, contested three, and Dwyer got there with the block. Correa Ooh. recovers, give her the layup, and she has seven. Okay, perfect. So you 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 block and you kind of wake her up real quick. And then she's like, no, I'm a competitor. I'm going to make up for it. Cavender contested her. layup. I think you'll see Correa get a lot more involved now, Roy. I would think so. You can kind of feel that. Cavender has mm -hmm. 20. Lead back to 10. Rimmed all open for a moment. Three-pointer, no. Correa gets it back. In rhythm, missed the three. And a put back up and in. The lead down to eight. So Weish with the bucket, 44-36. Dwyer trying to get involved. Euro lost the handle and a turnover. Ricard's inside. And a timeout called as Florida back in it with a quick run. It's now a six point game. Katie Meyer will talk things over. 2.31 to go in our third quarter. 44-38. This is Masterclass. Everything you've ever wanted to do, taught by the best to ever do it. Welcome to the engine room. Over 150 instructors, thousands of lessons, and new ones added all the time. Here we go. Masterclass. At Free Fly, we believe in more. More comfort. More freedom. More versatility. More adventures with family and friends. Shop now at freeflyapparel.com. 44-38, 231 to go in the third quarter. And Brooke, you just pointed this out during that 30-second break. We've got twins on the floor for Miami and Haley and Hannah Cavender. And then also for Miami, or for Florida rather, you've got Talia and Tatiana Weish, who just checked in for a brief moment. Two sets of twins playing at the same time against each other. 40% of the game right now, I believe the math I've done correctly, I'm pretty bad at math, but I think it's 40% of twin, the game are twins right now. It's pretty awesome. Open three, Cavender, swish. 23 on the board for 14 and White. And Tatiana checked out during that break. Well, it still happened. It, it did. still happened. Yeah. <laughs> There's some more action for Florida, but you see it's just it's one ball screen and dribble. So I think they have to get more movement. Not only with the ball, but without it. The Gators, there's a lot of standstill players versus Miami. You see everybody's moving for the Hurricanes. Rimmed off the miss. Williams the rebound. The handoff now to Harden. See if Jalea Williams wants to become more involved. Pindante missed the runner. Ricards tracks it down. A baseball heave ahead. Correa will shoot two.
Florida getting some transition points of their own. They can get the, the ball off the glass quickly and look up. They can get some fast break opportunities. Correa frustrated with herself for not finishing that one. The Big East first team member, St. John's transfer. So they've been held to single digits twice this season. She'll get one more coming up. North Florida Pittsburgh highlights a doubleheader of men's basketball coverage here on ACC Network coming up Saturday. Cornell and Syracuse follow at 3 Eastern, also available on the app. We look forward to those matchups as conference play looms ever closer. A couple of league games have already gone down. More to come as we get towards 2023. Lead is seven here between Miami and Florida. Cavender with 23 behind the back. Pendante outside to Harden. Hannah Cavender, though. Correa in transition and a chance for three. She's now in double figures with 11. Wide. Right. <laughs> well, they get another transition bucket. And this time she finishes the shot. If Florida can keep this up, make Miami go deep in the shot clock, take deep threes, tough shots, get the board. They've changed the pace of this game now back to their favor. And right now, plus one on the boards versus the U. So they've been able to neutralize some of those points off turnovers by controlling the glass. Now Correa with five points in the second quarter, now seven in the third. 12 overall in the lead, down to four. Dwyer still without a point today for Miami. Harden the miss. Tracked down by Williams and a fresh 20. Eight second differential between shot and game clock. Williams up and under with the bounce. Ricard came up really favoring her leg, trying to run through it. Ray has got to go. 49 43 with 10 to play in Coral Gables. Williams just have six points, but the six she's had a, has been important ones here. We'll stick in the deep. You know, powerful moments as we remind you it's V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. It's game changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting V.org slash donate. And remember, 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Start of our fourth quarter. Destiny Harden inside. She was fouled. And a chance for three the hard way working against Correa. Yeah, Destiny Harden. I, I like how when she catches it, she's got a purpose. Look at her working for position on the inside. And she knew as soon as she had it, she was going to go full force using that athleticism and strength to get herself to the basket. Coming into this game today, averaging 11 points, five boards, two assists. She's been really good in the paint so far for the Canes. Collision in the backcourt. Dean's off the mark. Cavender with 23. She's been the story. Correa with 12 so far to pace the Gators. And the Canes, if you're just tuning in, have led since the 2-10 mark of the first quarter. They've led by as many as 12 points this afternoon. Gators have crawled within two and three. But Miami has maintained a bit of separation. Ricards will go to the free throw line here to shoot two. Miami has done a good job not fouling at all today. Harden is the only player in foul trouble. She's got three. Certainly Miami could, they could press, they could take some chances just to make sure Florida doesn't make that run or, or slow this game down, get to the free throw line. That's the last thing the Hurricanes want to see. Your opinion for Florida, let's say get back within a possession. What needs to happen offensively? in this final quarter, in your opinion? Well, they just haven't put together a series of, of good shots to get these runs together. Miami responds so quickly defensively, making it difficult for them to entry pass, get it inside. 
And so there's, between that and the little movement that I've seen from Florida, the, the, everybody's got to move more. KK Deans, you know, her energy level's high. I'd like to see the rest of her teammates doing what she's doing, clapping, talking, getting involved. You know, where's that, where's that edge? Like, now you got to dig deep. Deans just picked up her third. Correa with three as well for the Gators. Lead is seven. Critical non-conference matchup, ACC, SEC, just how we like it in mid-December. Kind of a tone setter for the rest of the season for both sides. Williams off the screen. Got to go with five to shoot. Pindande in and out. Correa the rebound. Gators in transition. Elbow J. Cavender left open. Can't give her that. Couldn't finish that time. KK Dean steps into a three and connects. That's a little better for Florida. You get the rebound again, a couple couple transition buckets, but everybody's moving now, and I think that's what they needed just to, to break loose. That exchange critical. Cavender was wide open, missed the three. Deans was as well. She was able to finish. Now off the turnover. Ricards, offensive foul. Jasmine Roberts drew the charge, Brooke. Florida once again looking for their fast break opportunity. Ricards. Yeah, that's good defense. Great job getting outside of the charge circle, too. Great court awareness. And Ricards could, could just stop. Just a little teardrop jump shot. You can feel the pace of this game. Kind of slowing down to start our fourth quarter. Eight minutes to go. Canes by four. Roberts off the bounce. And the bump. Go against Tatiana Weish. Spearman trying to drive baseline. It was blocked off. Harden lost the handle. She'll get it back. Back iron and a rebound. A good one by Ricards. KK Dean's on the move. Correa left open. Spearman the rebound. Quickly ahead to Williams, wide open. And Miami with the layup. The lead expands to six. Miami turned a not so great shot into some fast break points. Hurricanes on top of that. Deans is short, pops out to Destiny Harden. Miami with the numbers advantage. Two Gators collided on the other end of the court. Bounce pass to Williams. Well, Rimdahl somehow got a piece of that. Mm -hmm. She's and done the that easy twice now. layup. Well, a wild exchange there. <laughs> Lead back down to four. This is. This is round for round. You got Boxing UFC, a superstar match, and good execution there. Screen and roll, simple play again. Cavender settling into the offense. The Florida so much more alive now, Roy. And look at, and now Correa's involved. You know, she's looking for the ball now, and they're looking for her. So Weish and Spearman exchange layups, and now a conversation between Coach and Leilani Correa. Leading score for the Gators. Trying to catch fire late. Her team down by six. Timeout. Back in Coral Gables, 56-50. Miami leading Florida. Brooke Weisbrod, Roy Philpott. Baseline drive by Ricards, and she was bumped before the shot. Spearman may have moved her off the block at the last minute.
Gators with 14 fouls, Miami with just two. See if that becomes a factor. The foul was called against Jalea Williams, her first. And another quick whistle here. And the other thing to pay attention to, Roy, is that Florida just has those two timeouts left. So you've got to use those very wisely. Jasmine Roberts picked up the personal there. Gators will inbound. Rimdahl, the fake. The block by Spearman. She'll get it back outside the Deans. She was fouled by Williams. So three free throws coming for K.K. Deans, an 88% free throw shooter. And if you're Williams, you got to be better than that in that sequence, right? Yeah, that worked out for Florida. I mean, a play, you get blocked, you get your own rebound, and now you're sending your teammates at the line for three free throws. Let's watch again. Mm -hmm. Not perhaps, a ton of contact. Uh, perhaps a drama minor at Florida. K.K. Deans. Deans now <laughs> one of three at the stripe today. She hits all three of these. It becomes a one-possession game. And K.K. now with 13. Transfer from West Virginia. It's playing toughness in the Gators' backcourt. Free throw will not count a lane violation. 56-52. Faith Doodle check back in. Also, uh, perhaps very important moment in this game. That's one point that does, you know, here we, here we go from four to three point. That could have been a one possession game now. That could really matter at the end. Cavender attacking. Lost the dribble. Tumbling out of bounds. It'll stay on this end. Well, you're seeing what Miami can be this year when Haley Cavender goes off. 23 points. That's her season high. Her career high is 31 back at Fresno State. She's a former Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. The Cavender's had a big night. Destiny Harden has scored 15. Miami's looked like a tournament team when that production is up in their backcourt. Now Cavender against Deans. Shot clock down to three. Cavender off oh, last. Give her Make 25. Under pressure, shot clock running down, and she creates. That's the sign of leadership right there. That's the sign of listening to coach's message to say, green light, you got it. Go, you got it. Go shoot more. Dukes. And Harden with a rebound off the carom. Oh, the Cavender tipped it to her. She got up and tipped it. And she has her, she, her involvement everywhere in this game. She thought about the logo J right there. You saw on the edge of the U, <laughs> the quick little uh, pump fake. And she thought better. Not the moment of the game where you take a logo three. Ooh. Destiny Harden thinking about it as well against Duke. Creates separation, back iron. And Spearman and taps it out of bounds. My bad. My, Miami could have gotten a much better shot there. That was way too much dribbling for, for what I've seen in their offense, and I think Coach Meyer would agree. That was not a possession that you would grade as an A+. Plus. Under five to go here in Coral Gables. Watts go center. Good crowd on hand here today. Good Teams train. have been active. Ricards the mid-range. You go and give that a suit to Duke for that great screen she set. Here's Delia Williams. The drop off to Spearman. She'll save it to Harden. Cavender. The dump off. Rejected. Oh. Weiss got there. And a foul call. Tatiana Weish. For Florida to play solid defense this entire possession. Look at Cavender trying to make something happen. A great cut and a pass down low. But then, foul for Florida. So they defended well for 26 seconds. And the result is putting Miami on the line. That one hurts. Kane's in the bonus as well the rest of the way. Spearman, a 71% free throw shooter. 
She had two point blank looks too on those layups. Couldn't corral the pass the first time. And then great defense by Weiss. She'll get one more free throw here. And Donde set to check back in on a make. Oh, of two. Ricard stop and pop. Yes, one possession game. <laughs> Let's go, Bench Energy. Here come the Gators, under four minutes to play in Coral Gables. Miami has led since there was two minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Destiny Harden answers the call. She's got 17. Ricard's feeling it. Yes. I don't think I've ever seen so many pound for pound mid range jump shots in my life. This is fantastic. You feel the rivalry here. These players have so much pride, and they're going one after another. The level of competition is just raising up every second we're in this game. Ricards has the last six for the Gators. Party like it's 1997, <laughs> says Brooke Weisbrod with a mid-range game. And a timeout call. It never went away. It's never been uncool. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> uh-huh. You look out there in, in college world. This is where it's at. Great pull-up. Destiny Harden. And then off the screen, you see why she's getting out of the way, making sure she's not going to get called for the foul. But Rakia, or excuse me, uh, Ricards, not Rakia, uh, read that really well. I just kept right to the pocket, didn't hesitate for the pull up jump shot. And now, no fouls to get for either team, two timeouts. You got to be court aware. And, and I always say this you got three minutes left, make the game simple. Just make it simple. See the pass be the pass if it's open there, but the more you try and complicate game, the, the game at this point in time, you're just gonna mess yourself up. Well, you wonder if Haley Cavender is ready to get back involved offensively with 25 points. Has the one bucket here in the fourth quarter. 14 in white, standing near midcourt. Shot clock under 10, important possession for the U. And Harden pushed off the block, and a foul was called against Duke. So she'll pick up her fourth personal. Check that, her third. Uh, I guess it was the, the second touch. You know, they, they talk about hot stove. The officials talk about hot stove. So you touch it once, hands off, you can't touch again. And even though it was very minimal contact by Dude. I, I'm, I'd have to think that that was the reason for that call there when Harden's at the line. Well, the official, too, was very clear after the whistle was blown. One more coming for Destiny Harden. She's got 18, second leading scorer today, averaging 11 points per game this year. 69% at the line. She's a perfect six for six today. Make it six for seven after the miss, but she'll get the rebound. Wow. The free throw shooter gets her own rebound. That kills you as a coach, and Miami only had one player on the line. And a foul called on Talia Weish. Kept Pendande down, trying to accept the pass in the post. Let's see Pendande, because yeah, you can kind of see Weish holding her back a bit because Pendande was late to try to get to that ball. Lola Pendande, 58% free throw shooter. One for two today. Makes it a two possession game. Well, Brooke, this is how we like our basketball games. This has been entertaining. <laughs> it's been a little chippy at times, but two teams haven't played each other in 12 years, just their second meeting in 19 years. Board of basketball, down by five. Deans to Correa. Against Destiny Harden, Correa, no. 
Harden tapped it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Gators. Destiny Harden on Correa is a good matchup for Miami. A little bit longer, athletic, can stay step for step. And so she's challenging the shots of Correa, and you see her trying to get over the outstretched arms of Harden. It's, it's hard. Leilani Correa with 12 points, averaging 16 coming in. All of her games this year have come off the bench. Ricards with a path and the bucket, 63-60. She now has 18 points. Yeah, I like the way Ricards has stepped in. So when Correa can't score, Ricards has gladly said, I'll, I'll take on that responsibility. And she's still in that attacking mindset. You don't want to settle for outside shots if you're Florida. If you can get in the lane, get in there. Williams picked up her dribble. Shot clock down to five. Cavender's got to go. Tripped up, and it's out of bounds. Back to the Gators, so a chance to tie with a three. And Ricards has scored the last eight for Florida. And that's why you don't need to settle for a three if you're Florida. She'll get it top of the key, feeling it off glass. Mm -hmm. Ten straight by Ricards for the Gators. It's a one-point game. That's incredible. Ricards is now taking over. And so you see how crafty she's getting off the bounce. Let her do that because now she's going to draw post players with her when she drives. And the next time she gets the ball, she can dish off to somebody down low. Crunch time has arrived in Coral Gables. Miami with possession. Cavender open for a moment. Shot clock down to five. Haley Cavender the crossover. Roberts fires a three. No. Harden inside and a shot clock violation, Brooke. That shot never hit the rim. Right? What a possession for Florida on defense. Typically, Miami's been able to work and get a shot almost effortlessly at times in this game. But when Florida has ratcheted up their defense, they beat Miami a little hesitant. It's a big possession for the Gators. Gators have not led today. Ricard's operating in traffic, double team. Pinball's out of bounds, 12 to shoot for Florida. Less than a minute to go. <laughs> You can't high-five the official now. <laughs> that is a no-no. Gators did have a lead at 14 to 12 back in the first quarter as Duke checks back in. That's the last time UF has been in front in this one. 12 to shoot. Correa with a screen for Deans. Five on the shot clock. Deans behind the back. Step away. Oh, Jumper is all dead. Florida out in front. <laughs> Ice cold KK Deans going to serve you up on a Sunday. Yes, behind the back. Step back. Give it to me. Matching Cavender's move from the first half. Shot clock running down. Do you know how hard this shot is? Under pressure to take the lead. Ooh. Teardrop, too, got all of that rainbow. Man, do you Deans. have an answer? Yes. Two of the biggest points in her Florida career. First lead since there was two minutes and change remaining in the first quarter. And now Miami's got to find a way to go back to work and reclaim momentum with 38 seconds left. So right now, it's all about, you know your defensive assignments. We have two timeouts. If you get in a position where you need to call a timeout, you get double teamed, don't throw the ball over. Look at this, sit close game, Sport has been there. 10 points or less, the Gators have closed out wins. Miami, not so much experience, but no wins yet. The Canes have been led by Cavender's 25, Destiny Harden's 18. What shot would you like to see here, and who do you want taking it? I don't mind a few different players for Miami taking the shot. I, I think you're going to see the ball, certainly in the hands of Cavender to create. 
Miami has been running some high ball screens to get their players the entry passes open. So you, know, you, you can give it to Harden, she can create it off the dribble. Or Cavender can do the same, Williams can do the same. So I'm wanting to see some action off ball screens up top, creating in the paint and then letting the defense give you the next shot, right? So if the post step up again, you want your post players, like a Pandande, make herself big down there. When I'm driving, if your post player comes up to get me, I'm gonna dish it off to you, otherwise I'm gonna shoot it. Canes with one timeout remaining, the Gators with two. Miami in the bonus. Williams will trigger. Williams gets it back. Here's the high ball screen. Operating in traffic, Jaleah Williams, the layup, and the Canes have the lead. It's just what you want. Great finish. The screen is set, Pendande is patient, she gets out of the way. Look at all of the other players as well. Destiny Harden moves out of the lane to give her room, right? Sees her, sees her driving, look, you see her step out of the way? That's to give herself space to pull her defense away. You can see it really here too, watch. Harden backs away. Hey, let me get in for the backside rebound. Pendande filling in. Really good shot for Miami, Jaleah Williams to close that one out. Well, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC this season. Now we need your help. This winter ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. Snap a pic, take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion and post it to your social media account. You just may see it on ACC Network. So crunch and time now the, for the, the Gators. TikToks, aren't you? The, the Roy TikToks? Ah, I'm a big TikTok <laughs> fan. I'm, I'm going to uh, talk with the Cavender twins and see if they can help me out and maybe. You need some lessons for sure. From yeah, them. I need a lot of lessons. All right, so for Florida, the roles yep. are now reversed. Shot clock is off. Are you playing for the final shot or are you taking the best first available? I'm taking the best first available. I think the longer you wait, the more the pressure builds. You don't feel it. So Florida has been playing off feel, off creating, off the high ball screens. You put the ball in the hands. I certainly, I think Ricards or KK Deans. And then if you're Correa, just be ready for a shot. You know, you haven't been able to create much off the dribble today, but you're certainly a scoring option. So hands and feet ready. Deans and Ricards have combined to score 15 of the last 17 for Florida. Gators have made six of their last seven. Ricards has it. Quickly double team. Plenty of time for KK Deans. No. Tracked down by Rimdahl. Shot clock is off. Ricards. Bumps and a foul call. Great job. Florida did not settle for a three. They knew they could get a good shot. Look at Ricard's here. She could have taken that, but knowing Pendande was not a great position, but could have maybe blocked the shot and said she puts the ball on the floor and says, no, I'm going to create. I love the mentality. Ricard's in this quarter. The Hurricanes try to make it difficult for her. Who's ice? Third foul on Pendande, tied at 65. Ricard's now with 21 points. This for the Williams. lead. No. And a timeout called by the Canes. At a tie game, 11.7 seconds to go. Ricard's had a chance to put Florida in front. And it all comes down to this. See, off the free throw here, it's important for Miami not only to get the rebound, but to call timeout right away to preserve time and also to be able to take it out, gain some ground. And so now it's, again, who takes that last shot? It, and it's a lot of different players for Miami who I, I definitely think feel comfortable. Williams obviously just put up a big one there. Cavender can create. Pindande would want the ball. You know, looks like Dwyer is not sitting down, so it doesn't look like she'll be a part of this last 11 seconds. But if you're Florida, I would take more aggressive tone out of this out of this timeout defensively. Like, you, you really are going to have to make it obvious to be a foul to get it called here, I think. So if I'm Florida, I'm going to definitely step my game up, switch everything, switch everything, and just contest the heck out of it. 
I always say in these moments, too, if you're taking a last second shot, as they added a tick more, it looks like a tenth of a second more on the clock, shoot the ball with five seconds left or four seconds left. That way you give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. Because so many times players want to wait to literally one, and, you know, they're, it's like they're out in their backyard. Give your team a second chance. Miami with a chance to win it and in Florida's seven game winning streak in the first meeting between these two since 2010. First meeting in the regular season since 2003. ACC SEC we'd have it no other way. <laughs> Roberts will inbounds for the U. Destiny Harden has it. Under 10 seconds to go. Tapped out of bounds, it'll stay with the Canes. Eight seconds remaining. Florida smart to try and trap. If that ball goes to the corner, you should definitely double team that. Pindande has it. Now Cavender. Five seconds left. Cavender double team. Haley Cavender, the pass. No, no. Overtime. <laughs> What a play. Cavender just a beat away of making the assist of her lifetime so far. A good job by Florida. You know, they doubled off the screen here. That's a great job defensively. But Cavender gets out of it. Oh, so, so close. Just, I'm saying, I mean, that is a half second, Roy. Williams tried to rush the layup, was out of time regardless. Free basketball from Coral Gables coming up. Well, neither team is going to let either team run over them, right? So even if we're seeing a bit of a run, and we've seen this game, you know, leads out to the double digits. Uh, but neither team is willing to give it up. Largest run for Florida, 10-0, 9-0 run for Miami today. Big stories, Haley Cavender, Nina Ricards. Ricards scored 17 of her 21 in the second half. Gators have it first in the extra session. Rimmed all off the bounce. Here's Ricard. she has been magnificent. High ball screen. Little high-low action. Kyle forces that one up, no. And a foul called, why hit the deck? Williams called for the personal. Williams got to watch out, you know, it's late in the game. You don't want to have too much to say for the officials and both players just going up tough for the rebound there. And Williams got... <laughs> And now that just looks like those two go back a long way just to just to make sure she's giving her a little message. <laughs> AAU teammates, you love it. They had had this game circled on their calendar since they found out about it back in the middle of the summer. One more free throw coming. We're talking about the Weiss twins and Jalea Williams for Miami. I get a vibe that Jalea Williams is is pretty creative in the way that she talks. <laughs> I want One to know what two. that little message was. Anything to uh, gain the advantage. <laughs> well, now NBA players are saying their kids got to go to sleep soon, so, you know. Roberts the anything. aggressor. And free throws coming for number four and wide, Jasmine Roberts. Miami so, led by as many as 12 points. That, Advantage coming in the second quarter, Brook at 29 to 17. Gators scratched and clawed their way back in it late. Miami had a chance to win it, couldn't do it, hence overtime. And Jasmine Roberts, only two points today. We'll get one more free throw to try to tie it up. Well, neither team doing themselves much favor from the free throw line today. Miami's only at 61%, Florida at 64%. As good as this game has been, I'm surprised that the free throw shooting has been so bad. I'll take it, though. I mean, if that's the only thing we got, we'll take it. Roberts somehow got it back. And a foul called on the rebound. 
Both teams in the bonus, and a lot happening there. Roberts, first off, mm -hmm. missed two free throws, then somehow grabbed the rebound on her tiptoes, it looked like, reaching extended as far as she could. That's the second time that we've seen Miami, the free throw shooter, be able to do that. So Florida's got to recognize that right now. You know, rebounding could be a big difference in this game. It, it, neither team has dominated the glass whatsoever. Right now, it's actually only still plus one from Florida. But a free throw's got to be an automatic rebound for your team if you miss the, on the defensive end. Tied at 66. No more. Two of two that time for Jasmine Roberts. Canes by one. K.K. Dean's double teams. Gray has been held in check for the most part. Shot clock under 10. And Dean's the runner. Fell down hard in the foul caught against Pendande. And if that's her, that'll be number four. Miami doing what they can to try to keep K.K. Dean's to one side of the floor. They don't want her to drive middle. See how hard Roberts is working to force her baseline. And then KK Deans do does what she, she does well. And finds contact. And once again, Jaleel Williams, a little something to say. Now Kelly Ray Finley, you know, talking about this team this year, her Florida Gators tied at 67. So we've got a lot of personalities on this team, but it's KK Deans that brings the energy, all the energy, all the dance moves, Brooke, you'll appreciate that. Keeps everybody fired up, and I think she's been kind of that spark today behind the scenes with Ricards garnering second half headlines and all that point production. No doubt, no doubt. I think, you know, what she brings, her, her energy and, and willingness to to create something, make something happen for a team, and then Ricards, her toughness, uh, coming from a great high school program at Christ the King. You can see her basketball background and the way she plays. Williams against Dean. Now Cavender. Off the pump fake. Roberts has to go. Shot clock under five. Spearman down low and she was fouled. Miami once again finding interior passing as the shot clock is running down. No worries, that's a great bounce pass inside, a left-handed bounce pass as the shot clock's running down. Third foul to Leah Weich. Twin sister Tatiana has four. Tied at 68. We've already seen three lead changes in the extra period here. Make it four. Who wants it more? Three minutes and change to find out in this rivalry matchup. Gators and Canes. Ricards operating and connecting. Florida back in front. That underhand scoop layup she has, it, she's so good at catching you off guard. And the way she shoots it, it, it makes it hard to block because it's underhand. She can protect her shot with her body. Nice move. She's got 23, almost matching Cavender's 25 for the U. Spearman wide open. Missed the layup. Gets it back and up and in. Cage with the lead. Halfway through overtime. Deans against Roberts. Well, the offense has to run through 15 in black. Ricards every yeah. possession, right? Yeah, yeah. And you don't want Deans and, and her crowded in space. You, you need to keep them spaced out. Baseline J. Weish, no. Miami has it and a chance to enhance that advantage. I'm going to rate that shot a 5 out of 10. That looked a little unsure to me for Florida. Natalia Weish, a two points, one of four from the court. This is the mid-range, and now Destiny Harden has it. Williams against Ricards. She'll concede the long jump shot. Spearman, no. 
trying to spot Correa in traffic. And she'll shoot two. <laughs> this game is wild. I mean, it took about four seconds for that pass to come down. <laughs> well, Miami played around with the ball too much. It was five seconds left before they started to make their move toward the basket. And, and they you know, they got the same grade. That was a five out of ten on their possession, too. And so two bad possessions maybe for both teams cancel each other out. But Florida able to tie this game up at the line. First points in overtime for Correa. She's got 13 and a chance to put Florida back in front, and she does. We had three lead changes in the first four quarters. We've had seven so far in overtime. Williams with a pass. Missed the layup. Spearman gets it back up and in. Spearman. Two huge offensive rebounds for Spearman in these last two minutes of the game. Under a minute to play. 73-72 Miami. Correa thinking about it. Launching. In and out. Rimdahl gets it back with a fresh 20. K.K. Deans was pushed, driving baseline. Thought she may have stepped out of bounds for a moment. I mean, this has been her mode of operation today. Now she stayed in bounds. She was able to keep that incredible balance and, and create contact. Smart heads up play by K.K. Deans. 17 points today for K.K., the West Virginia transfer. Four of six of the line. Make it five of seven with a friendly bounce. Gators with the lead. KK is clutch. Fourteen second differential between the clocks. Plenty of time for Miami. Williams wants the screen, she'll get it. Spearman rolled, no pass. And now a timeout called by Katie Meyer, who did not like the feel of that Picaviter with 25. Her most productive performance since transferring to the U from Fresno State. And how about the play of Nina Ricards, 23 points, just one away from tying her career high. And Brooke Weisbrot, all of the production, the bulk of it at least, coming in the second half and in OT. Yeah, she stepped up big time, just like she did in the NCAA tournament when she had 17 against UCF. And, and Cavender has had a slow fourth quarter here. And from what you told me, the conversations that Katie Myers had with her about, you've got to shoot the ball. I, I think that this could be a good time for her to, to reclaim that space and draw up the right play because she's going to have to create something off the, off the bounce. I think it's her time. You saw Williams create for herself as well. But Miami's so good at passing at the interior, just... They only have nine seconds to do it now, so you don't have a whole lot of time to waste. Got to get to it. 74, 73, nine seconds to shoot. Just 24 seconds remaining in overtime. Brooke Wise, Broad, Roy, Philpott, what a game this has been. First meeting in 12 years between Florida and Miami. Spearman with a double-double. She now has 10 and 11, and those two big offensive rebounds coming in the last three possessions. Cavender will trigger. Got to go. Spearman has it. And now Williams. Deep shot, short. And the rebound by Florida. An awkward possession. Dean's under the rim, right place, right time. Yeah, you can, you can see Katie Meyer needing to to take a moment and collect her thoughts because definitely not the play that she thought to draw up and, and where Miami got into trouble was the inbound play came and it got stuck in the hands of Spearman over there and she wasn't I don't know if the handoff wasn't available because Florida was face guarding but there was some action that was supposed to happen after the ball got to Spearman that didn't happen because you kind of saw her look to see somebody grab it from her right 
And so that didn't happen, and then the play got busted. Roberts was called for the foul after Dean secured the board. Still a one possession game, shot clock is off. And let's see if Florida elects to foul here. Instead, it's Williams. I mean, you and now Roberts. For a quick two. Yep, you got to go three now. Cavender, step back, rejected by Dean's out of bounds. 4.3 seconds to go. Fierce. And see, Miami, I think Roy had a better opportunity to just drive as fast as they can, try to go for a quick two, and now you force a three. It's going to be tough to find some room here. Florida's defense is, is feeling real good right now. KK Deans is fired up. Kane's out of timeouts. Who wants it? Cavender gets open against Deans. The step back to tie it. No! And Florida on the road. Eighth consecutive victory in the books. Our final in Coral Gables. 76 to 73 in overtime. And the Gators are chopping. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gator bait. 